Yo guys, boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. Welcome back to another video on the channel. And we're here at MGM Springfield. Just got here, walking in the uh, garage right now. And we're playing another session, boys. We got another session in here. Um, it's been about a week. I did actually take a break. Um, took about a five day break. It's October 9th or 10th, whatever day it is. I think it's the 9th. Um, and I, the last session I played, last video was from October 4th. So five, six-ish day break. Um, longest break I've taken in a while, so well needed. We're gonna go back and play. We need this. We definitely need a winning session today. Um, there's absolutely no exceptions right now. Um, we just need to, to get a book, book a winning session here and get back into the green and see what happens. Um, before we get in there, first thing, huge shout out to everyone that did purchase the merch. Um, thank you guys for supporting me. Thank you guys so much for just purchasing the merch. Um, it means a ton and everything's gonna be shipped out in two weeks. So first two weeks, um, first two weeks there will be the orders being placed and the next two weeks, about early November, you guys should be getting some stuff in the mail if you did purchase. So huge shout out and thank you to everyone. You'll be getting the tracking numbers, I believe, through email. So whatever email that you did use to purchase, you will be getting a tracking number and you'll be expecting some stuff shipping out to you guys early November. So i um, super excited to see you guys get some stuff and see, hopefully you guys can tag me in some pictures on Instagram or whatever that uh, when it does come in, I'm super excited for you guys to get it. It's awesome. Shout out to, uh, to that little lion, MGM lion there. But anyways, we are off to get another session. Hopefully this one doesn't end like the last five have. So see how it goes. Oh my God, it's rainy. Look at this. Let's go play, let's do well, let's report back. All right guys, so the first hand that we have for you, I have pocket queens in middle position with a starting stack of 400 and we have an undergun player who opened it up to $20 and it folds all the way back to me. Uh, this guy, I've seen him lose a really big hand, losing to ace queen high on a king jack jack 7-5 board. Um, he was calling a $90 preflop bet out of position so I know that he can be pretty loose, pretty active, and definitely a calling station. So for those reasons, I'm going to three bet on the bigger side. It was always a three bet spot, but three bet to a bigger sizing of $75. It folds all the way back to him and he decides to make the call. So we are going to a flop in position of Jack 10, five, two hearts out there. And it is not really a good board for Queens here. He, it checks to me and although he absolutely can have a very wide range, he does have a lot of pocket 10s and Jacks in his range as well and even Jack 10 off suits. So not the board that I really wanted to see. I decided to check it back for pot control. Um, just, just really not liking this board. The turn is a four and he checks to me again. And here it's obviously a mandatory bet spot with an over pair. Um, I don't think hands that beat me would check it twice out of position to me. So um, there's just no way, yeah, just no way a hand that beats me would check on the turn. So I decided to throw out a bet of $100, a larger sizing, um, trying to look like ace king sometimes is a bluff, but realistically gonna get value from my queens, obviously. So he thinks and ends up raising me. He raises, he check raises me on this turn to with $310 and he only has like not that much behind and I am, uh, and I'm pretty short um, compared to that. So I only have like 20 bucks behind or uh, behind if I do call this 310. So I tank for a while. I immediately want to fold. I don't think a lot of one, two players would ever really bluff in this spot, especially check raising as a bluff. So immediately want to fold. I tank for, you know, maybe a minute or two. And then he starts talking. He starts talking, saying that he doesn't have any cards on the board. And I'm like, okay, thank you for the green light to let me call and jam this. Um, he's, he's saying he has no cards on the board, so he has either aces, kings, or ace, king. And he doesn't have aces or kings, I'll tell you that much. So that was, uh, that was kind of a gift I really wanted to fold. So here, um, when he says that, it just seems like a bluff all the time wanting me to fold. I decided to rip it all in for a total of 340. It's only about $30 more. He doesn't look happy about it and decides to make the call for $30 more. Kind of committed there. So we're going to go to a river, which is a deuce of spades. I show my pocket queens and we are good. He shows ace king off suit and we take it down. Um, wow. That was kind of a gift. I really wanted to fold there, but shout out to him for talking and uh, giving me a lot of information. 
Next hand, we have 10-7 of hearts in the hijack. It is a fun hand to play, so I'm playing it. A limp. I just have to limp in this pot. So there's three limpers to the player to my left who raises it up to $10. And uh, when other people call, obviously, I am not going to fold. So we decide to make the call of $10 as well. So we're going to go to a flop of 8 9 five, two diamonds and a heart out there. So we do pick up an open ender and the backdoor flush draw. So... Um, when action checks to me, I uh, I am just going to check here to the preflop razor. Although we are multi way, there are just not that many. I don't know. I just want to see a free card and also just let the preflop razor bet if you wanted to. So um, he is allowed to check around and we're going to go to a turn, which is the jack of diamonds here. The flush does get there, but we do make a straight. So um, action is onto the player to my right who bets $15. Here with my straights, I'm going to charge for any diamond draws, and uh, I should probably hear back if he does have um, the flush already. So I decided to raise it up to $40 for value. The player to my left makes the call. Interesting. And the player to my right thinks and ends up jamming $225 total. This isn't a spot that I continue on, um, but definitely a mandatory raise spot in my opinion. So I fold, and the player to my left folds as well. Probably already had the flush, got some value out of it. Nice hand. Following after that, we have Ace Queen offsuit in under the gun, and I open things up to fifteen dollars. And uh, people are not afraid of my under the gun raise. We get four callers, so we go five ways to a flop, which is Ace High. It's Ace Eight Five Two Spades out there, and I am going to see bet forty five dollars when it checks to me. And we only get one caller, a very call happy player in the late position. So um, I've played with this player a lot. He uh, he doesn't like to fold. So Ace Queen gonna just barrel and put in some pressure and just try to try to get paid. So. Um, the turn is the seven of diamonds, bringing the backdoor flush draw, and here I'm going to bet on the bigger side out of position. And like I said, I'm going to continue firing and putting in the pressure. So I throw in a bet of 125. He thinks for a little bit and doesn't take too long before making the call, and he only has about 150-ish dollars behind. So I um, really would have loved him to jam in this spot, which he's very capable of doing, um, overplaying one pair and draws and stuff. So... Um, only 150 behind, just going to put it in the rest of his stack on a fairly non-diamond runout, I think. So um, the river comes the eight of hearts. So really great card. I'm not really putting him on eight, calling two streets here. And my queen high kicker should be good with my ace. So um, I just have to jam, go with my plan. And he tanks for a long time and ends up folding. Um, he folds, but mid muck, he uh, gets one card exposed, which is the jack of diamonds. I don't know what that is. Maybe he had pocket jacks, but I don't think he was that strong with it. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure what he folded there with the jack of diamonds. I guess maybe ace jack offsuit, but I don't. He, he just doesn't. That's just not in his folding range. Actually, that's a lie. Did not fold ace jack offsuit, so I'm not entirely sure what he folded. Next hand, we pick up pocket aces in the cutoff, and there's a button straddle. Love to see that. Things are working out in position with a button straddle. And with the best hand ever. So there are four calls to a late position player who uh, raises it up to $25. He is a pretty big stack and he's been playing pretty well this whole time. And it's a really small raise considering there's four callers slash limpers in this straddled pot. So I decide to three bet to $85 here in the spot. In position, aces, obviously a three bet spot. Um, the button straddler fold and the small blind player ends up calling he calls the $85 after limping five bucks pre, so that's interesting. He's been very um, active, so uh, I'll, I'll take the call regardless. And the late position pre flop raiser makes the call as well. So we are going three ways to a three bet pot. Flop comes Jack, four, deuce, rainbow, and action checked all the way to me. What a great flop for us, and I just got to fire somehow. I decided to fire a really small bet of $135. Both players make the fold, unfortunately, so we don't get any more value, but a uh, great run out and a great board for aces there. Hand following that, we have ace jack of diamonds in middle position, and I opened it up to $15, and we get four callers, so we're now out of position here somehow. So, a pretty active table, clearly, and we're going to go to a flop, which comes jack 6-6, six, six, and uh, it's a really good flop for us, especially when it's a rainbow board. So I am just going to see bet $30 with my top pair, top kicker. And we get one player in position. This player is the same guy who cold called from the small blind last hand with aces. He's pretty active. And um, yeah, he's really active. So I'm hoping to get some value with my jack. 
And we're going to go to a turn, which is the Nine of Hearts, bringing the backdoor flush draw and still just going to bet. I decided to bet really small here again, um, just trying to get value from worse hands. Jack 10, hands like that. Um, I don't know. Just wanted to uh, kind of get value and also pot control at the same time, if that makes any sense. I bet 55, and he decides to make the call once again. The river is the deuce of clubs, so an absolute brick of a card, and I am out of position first to act here. I decide to th fire a third barrel. I think, although he does have a bunch of sixes in his range, is absolutely uncapped range. It's still a spot where I definitely have to bet and probably fold to any uh, to any jam here. So I decide to bet $150 sized up here, and he does jam for $210 total. And I did say I was going to fold, but not for $60 more. I probably should have been a little more aware of his stack size. Um, I was sitting in the nine seat. He was sitting in the one seat. So whatever um that's my fault but i just have to call the 60 dollars more unfortunately and begrudgingly he shows king six offsuit and he takes it down a uh, pretty big pot and i doubled him up there so that was kind of annoying um looking back like maybe the turn i can just check call but realistically um i don't think i can get away from there in that spot that's just really annoying although he has a very uncapped range um yeah that that one stunk for me Next hand, in the big blind, we look down at two black aces, and there's none of the gun straddles, so we're, we're picking up hands with the straddles on, so that's always nice to see. We get an under the gun plus one limper, and the middle position player raises it up to $20. It folds all the way back to me, in the big blind, out of position, aces, yeah, three bet is in order. I three bet to $85, and before anything happens, the Unleon Straddler rips it all in. He jams for $230 total, and now actually onto the Unleon plus one player, the guy who cracked me with King-6 offsuit, he tanks for a long time, and trust me, I want him to call so bad. He still has the same stack. It was a few hands after the King-6 hand, and I really want all that money back. He tanks for maybe a minute and a half, and ends up folding, unfortunately. So that's unfortunate. And uh, the middle position player who did raise, he also folds. He had a pretty big stack as well. Wanted someone to call this $230 jam. But uh, anyways, I'm just going to call, obviously. And the guy shows ace three of hearts. So we're looking in great shape. We go to a flop, which is king, queen, four, rainbow. Turn seven of hearts for a little bit of a sweat. And the river is a jack of clubs. So we take it down. And uh, we take down a pretty easy pot with aces. So um, there, it doesn't get much easier than that. Although there was a sweat in the turn, it doesn't get much easier than that. Next spot, we are in late position. We look down at two red kings. Awesome. Premium hold, holdings. That's always good to see. There's a limper to uh, a middle position player who raises it up to $15. He's a big stack, and he's the same guy that covers me. Um, he's been pretty steady. I decided to three bet, obviously, to $50. And it folds all the way back to him and he decides to make the call. So we're in position here and we're going to go to a flop of King 7 Deuce Rainbow. Flopping top set on a really dry board. What is happening? Um, he is a really big stack, like I said. So I'm tr now, I before I wanted to kind of pot control with Kings if it was like a scary board. But flopping top set, yeah, we're, 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 we're going to have to pump it. So um, when he checks to me, I decide to down bet to $40. Um, I didn't want to check in this spot and I wanted to get some value and I think down betting here is ter definitely, um, fine. I can get a lot of his range to call, um, because there's a lot of, not really a lot, but just wanted him to call with really anything. So, um, I down bet to 40 and he does make the call and we go to a turn, which is the nine of diamonds. And it's a perfect card for us to barrel a lot bigger here. Um, so when he checks to me, I decide to throw out a bet of $150 here. Um, one, I don't really know what his range is right now um, when he does down bet the $40 and getting information from him. But two, the board's a little more connected to the backdoor flush draw. And we're sitting with top set. We want to get um, a lot of value. So he tanks for a long, long time and decides to uh, unfortunately fold. Um, he said that he turned a really sick draw and thought about calling. But um, anyways, well, we're happy to take it down with a top set. We would have loved to get stacks in in that point. But um, anyways, I'll take it down. All right, guys. 
mid-session update here, playing for about three hours, and we are, uh, we got a pretty big stack. Uh, <laughs> we are in the game for 470, and right now we're sitting on a route about 1470-ish, so it's going pretty well, going pretty smoothly, and we're running pretty well, finally, for the love of God. Ideally, we can close this thing out, but been only been playing for three hours. Um, you know, I just took a little walk around, and uh, just wanted to clear my head, and then talk to you guys for a little bit, so. Um, things are going really, really well. Besides the King-6 versus Ace-Jack hand, that's the only thing that kind of fucked me over. Um, really would have loved to take that one down, or at least avoided the, uh, the situation. I think, I think I can't ever check on that river. Um, the deuce of clubs, the brickest of all brick rivers, I just can't, I just can't check. I couldn't find a check. Couldn't find a check that out of position against this player, so I really thought he could call. And um, obviously, you know, we, we, you guys know the story. I lost a King Six offsuit, which kind of sucks, but that's unfortunate. But we're running really, really good right now. Um, things are going well, like I said, and ideally we can just keep this up. Um, pretty big stack. There's another really, really big stack. He covers me. It's a one-two game. My goodness. Um, he has like two thousand in front. It seems like um, definitely covering me. And uh, yeah. So another thing, just want to address. Sorry for the no table footage. Usually when I come to MGM, I'd love to uh, incorporate that for you guys. But the first thirty minutes of this session, I tried. I recorded. And I was just not playing well. Um, it was just really stupid. I punted off $70 off of bluffs, and obviously now after the fact, the, the, the cameras are down. Uh, haven't really been bluffing, just playing for value, so that's going really, really well. Um, so that's the reason why. Maybe tomorrow, I'll probably add some table footage in the next video. Because uh, I think I'm going to play here tomorrow as well. You'll, I guess I'll... The plan is to play here tomorrow as well, so maybe I'll throw in some table footage for you guys. But uh, anyways, let's just get back into it. The night is young. It's what, seven o'clock? My goodness. Seven o'clock, the Cardinals stomping all over the Braves. Let's go. They are making it to the, ALS, uh, the NLCS. Um, but anyways, let's go back into poker, run things up. I'll see you guys. After the mid-session update, we have a hand of Ace King of Hearts under the gun, and I opened it up to $15, and we get two callers to a late position player who three bets to 75. Full dollar back to me, and I look at his stack. I look at his stack. He has about $700 behind, and here out of position, um, one I haven't seen him make a move like this before. He's been Sitting pretty steady and and also seems like a pretty competent player. Um, but here, Ace King suited. I am going to put in the four bet. I'm out of position, which kind of leads me to this decision. And he's a little bit deeper as well. So um, here, I four bet to two hundred and twenty-five dollars. It folds all the way back to him, and he doesn't think too long before folding. Um, he asked if I had aces, and I was like, no, definitely did not have aces in this spot. Um, but he said that he had kings and folded. So I don't really believe him here, but I mean, you know, whatever. I'll take the fold. I'll take the $75 and the other 15 from uh, the other players. So I'll take it down there. No big deal. All right, guys. Figured I would do this outro here. I'm um, signing off for now. Um, would rather do an outro here in the poker room as opposed to just walking around in the garage. Makes a little more sense. But I uh, ended up playing for about five, six, uh, six hours total of six hours and uh, not a whole lot really happened after doing the mid-session update. Uh, it was a little card dead but granted ran hot enough in the beginning early part of the session so not going to complain about that. We kept our stack where it was um, chipped up just a little bit here and there. Mediocre hands, you know, picked up aces, three bet, everyone folded. Um, queen 10 on a queen high board and got one street of value from that. Um, not a whole lot of stuff to report that was interesting if I didn't want to throw it in the blog but um, anyways, I ended up in for the game for 470, out of the game for total of 1649 profits of almost 1200, which is awesome. Totally wiped out the, uh, the this downswing of September there, so that's awesome news. We needed this, and uh, it, it happened. So super happy to report back to you guys. Um, leaving now, tomorrow, real time tomorrow, the next video, uh, I'll kind of explain why I'm actually out here in Western Mass just a little bit. Um, something I'm really looking forward to tomorrow, it's a big day, so I'm gonna go home uh, or go to a hotel, sleep, and probably play tomorrow. Definitely gonna play tomorrow after my event. Um, and you'll see that in the next vlog. So we'll be back here at MGM, good old MGM. Hopefully I can get some table action for you guys. Today I really want to focus on just playing well, play profitably, and uh, not have to worry about filming and doing all that other stuff. But tomorrow is a different day. Maybe we can mix in some films, increase the uh, 
increase the video quality of the video, increase the production quality of the video, and um, we can go from there. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.